image like no other, inspiring decades of research and debate, the Shroud of Turin, that's a piece of history, and it has an ongoing puzzle for science. The Shroud of Turin is a burial cloth that's imprinted with what many believe is the actual image of Jesus after his crucifixion. Now, it's been debated for years, but the Shroud is back in the headlines in a major way. There's an incredible mystery surrounding the blood of Jesus, the very blood that saved us. At this very moment, DNA analysis might be underway. Just as fascinating as the image on the Shroud of Turin are the hundreds of bloodstains covering both the Shroud and a separate headcloth. But here's the big question. Could the DNA on these garments be the DNA of God? Has it ever been thoroughly analyzed? What secrets could it reveal? The answer is more astonishing than you think. And did you know there are actually two different types of blood on the Shroud? What does that mean? I'm Bible teacher Nelson Walters. And before we dive into the mystery of this blood, we must first ask, is it truly the blood of God? Shocking new evidence about the Shroud of Turin has emerged. Have you seen the buzz? A wave of breaking news has shaken the world of Shroud research. A brand new X-ray scatter analysis of the linen cloth has confirmed something incredible. It dates back to the first century, aligning perfectly with the time of Jesus' crucifixion. You've probably heard whispers about this groundbreaking analysis, but here's why it's such a game-changer. It completely dismantles the flawed carbon-14 dating from the 1980s, an analysis conducted by atheist scientists that wrongly claimed the shroud was medieval. Now, minds are opening to the reality that the shroud may truly be the burial cloth of Jesus, and that astonishing image could be our Lord himself. But here's the thing. We never needed this new analysis to prove the truth. The bloodstains on both the shroud and the separate headcloth, known as the Sudarium of Oviedo, have already confirmed it for those willing to see. Even the Gospel of John 20 verses 6-7 to testifies about these two sacred garments. When Peter and John raced to the tomb, John made sure to mention he outran Peter, which always makes me smile. But what they found inside was far more important, the burial cloths of Jesus lying there as evidence of something miraculous. So, if the shroud and the suderia match, what does that mean? The truth is bigger than you think. The bloodstains that prove the shroud's authenticity are remarkable. When Peter and John arrived at the empty tomb, they saw something extraordinary, two separate burial cloths. One was the shroud, which wrapped the body, and the other was a headcloth, carefully folded and set aside, John 20 verses 6-7. But why was there a separate headcloth? In Jewish tradition, a cloth was placed over the face of the deceased when taken down from the cross, not only for dignity but also to preserve every drop of blood, which had to be buried with the person. And here's where things get mind-blowing, the headcloth, known as the Sudarium of Oviedo, contains 124 distinct bloodstains. Blood spatter analysis proves a 100% match between the stains on the Sudarium and the Shroud of Turin. Both cloths contain the same rare blood type, AB positive. The blood patterns reveal key facial details. An 8 cm long nose bent to one side, evidence of a broken nose. Both cloths show wounds on the cheek and scalp, injuries from a crown of thorns. And here's the final proof. The Sudarium of Oviedo has a well-documented history dating back to at least 570 AD, meaning the shroud must be at least that old too. This destroys the flawed carbon-14 dating that falsely claimed the shroud was medieval. So, while the recent X-ray scatter analysis confirming the shroud's first-century origin is exciting, the truth was already written in blood. The same man was covered by both cloths. There is zero doubt. The question is, are you ready to believe it? What did John see that made him believe? When John entered the empty tomb, something astonishing made him believe that Jesus had risen from the dead. But what was it? John 20 verses 8 to 9 tells us, Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Think about it. John didn't yet understand that Jesus was supposed to rise. Mary Magdalene didn't either. Her first thought was that someone had stolen the body. So, what did John see that changed everything? The shroud. Could it be that John saw something extraordinary on that cloth? Something that proved Jesus had risen? The gospel mentions the grave clothes multiple times, as if to emphasize that they were more than just fabric. Some say the miraculous image on the shroud was what convinced John. It wasn't a man-made idol. It was something God himself had created. But here's what makes this even more mind-blowing. The blood stains on the shroud were there first, right after Jesus was wrapped in it. The image appeared later but in perfect alignment with the wounds on his head, body, back, arms, and legs. 
The blood pooled exactly as expected for a body that had been lying in a tomb for a few hours. This wasn't just a burial cloth. It was a testimony, a physical witness to the resurrection. For those who think the shroud isn't biblical, John's gospel focuses on it repeatedly. So, why would he emphasize it if there was nothing remarkable about it? The truth is, John saw and believed. The question is, will you? Check out our other teachings on the shroud. We've included links at the end of this video. But today, we're diving deep into something we've never covered before, the blood of the shroud. What does it reveal? More than you can imagine. Stay tuned. The blood on the shroud is a forger's worst nightmare. If the shroud of Turin were a forgery, here's something no forger would ever think to do. Use real human blood, apply two different types of blood, both from the same man, perfectly matching the way blood flows before and after death. Yes, you read that right. The blood on the shroud and the Sudarium of Oviedo is both pre-mortem and post-mortem blood, meaning some of it came from wounds that were actively bleeding while the man was alive, while other stains came from blood that flowed after death. And here's something even more shocking, the blood is still red. Most dried blood turns brown or black, but this blood remains a striking red. Why? Scientists believe it's due to bilirubin, a substance released when a body endures extreme stress and torture. No medieval artist could have faked this because, 1,500 years ago, no one even knew how to test for it. If someone had forged this, they would have had to brutally torture and kill a man to create it. But history offers no record of such an act because this isn't a forgery. And there's more, the blood type is AB positive, the rare blood type found most commonly among Middle Eastern men. Both the shroud and the sudarium contain this exact same rare blood. But what about the DNA? What do we really know about the genetic code of the man wrapped in these cloths? The answer might change everything. Stay tuned. DNA evidence. What does the blood on the shroud reveal? Scientists have vacuumed dust from the Shroud of Turin, uncovering traces of DNA. But much of it is from plants and various humans who have handled the relic over centuries. This contamination makes it difficult to extract anything definitive. However, there's one pure source of DNA, the bloodstains. When scientists analyzed dried flakes of blood from the Shroud, here's what they found. The person wrapped in the Shroud was undeniably male, possessing a Y chromosome, just as every human man does. His DNA had two sets of chromosomes, just like all other humans. This directly contradicts the claims of Ron Wyatt, an amateur archaeologist who alleged he found the Ark of the Covenant along with Jesus' blood. Wyatt claimed that the blood he found contained only one set of chromosomes, unlike any other human, and that the blood was still alive and functioning even 2,000 years after Jesus' death. But here's the problem. Wyatt never provided lab results. No lab confirmed his claims, and no witnesses ever saw the ark or the blood he described. That leaves us with a choice, either the shroud contains the true blood of Jesus, or Ron Wyatt's story is true. It can't be both. So, if Jesus' blood is on the shroud, one major question remains. Where did the Y chromosome come from? Since a Y chromosome is always inherited from a human father, how did Jesus, a man born of a virgin, have one? This is exactly the kind of question a secular scientist would ask. But scripture calls Jesus the last Adam, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 45. God formed the first Adam, and he formed the second. The mystery of Jesus' DNA only deepens the awe of the incarnation. Science is still catching up to what faith already knows. So, what does this DNA tell us about the divine origins of Jesus? That's the real question. Stay tuned. Jesus' DNA, a divine blueprint or a human mystery, if God created Adam with two complete sets of chromosomes without any human lineage, then wouldn't it make sense that Jesus, the last Adam, was also formed in the womb of Mary with a fully designed genetic code from God? This raises an intriguing question. Was Jesus' DNA entirely God's creation? If so, was his DNA flawless, free from the genetic mutations and imperfections found in all humans? Or would his DNA look completely normal, like that of any other man? We know from Isaiah 53 verse 2 that Jesus' appearance wasn't particularly majestic or striking. But if we could analyze his genetics, would we find a biological blueprint for human perfection? Or would we discover a man with normal DNA yet spiritually perfect? Attempts to decode Jesus' DNA. There have been two significant attempts to analyze the blood DNA from the Shroud of Turin. In the 1990s, Garza Valdez's study, Asterisk DNA of God Asterisk, sequenced portions of three genes from bloodstained threads, identifying beta-globin, a hemoglobin gene, and sections of X and Y chromosomes, 
confirming the presence of male DNA. In 1995, Canole's dual analysis took samples from the feet of the shroud and the sudarium of Oviedo, the headcloth, examining multiple genetic sequences, including X and Y chromosomes and blood clotting genes. Final verdict? Contamination. Too many people have handled the relics, making it impossible to isolate pure DNA. So, for now, the mystery remains. If we could truly analyze Jesus's DNA, what would we find? The key to perfect humanity, or simply the markings of an ordinary man with an extraordinary purpose? Stay tuned, because this discovery is far from over. The Shroud's hidden secrets, more than just DNA. While the idea of discovering Jesus's complete genome is thrilling, the reality so far has been, well, disappointing. The blood samples have been contaminated, and no definitive DNA sequence has been isolated. But here's the real kicker. The image on the shroud holds even greater mysteries. What does the shroud reveal about Jesus? His long hair. Did he take a Nazarite vow? The crown of thorns. What species of plant was used? His burial attire. What kind of belt and loincloth did he wear? Jewish customs. Was he buried with tzitzit, fringes? The crucifixion nails. Where were they placed, and what were they shaped like? And one of the most fascinating clues, the nameplate attached to his body, further proving that the man in the shroud was Jesus of Nazareth.